Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis, support.greatdetectives.net, or become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters at patreon.greatdetectives.net. All right, well, now it's time for today's episode of Boston Blackie. The original air date on this one is December the 24th of 1946, and this one is the Harry Perkins murder. Tom? Yeah, Bob. We on time? Sure. We just high ball through Danville. Oh, we're coming to that bad curve, huh? Uh, it's not the curve that's bad, Tom. It's the grade crossing just around it I don't like. Hope they make an underpass out of it pretty soon. Where you been? Back in the baggage car. And I've never seen so many armed guards in my life. What are we carrying? Gold and plenty of it. They gave it to us to carry because we go non-stop from the capital all the way to the city. Gold, huh? Yep. Uh, well, I guess if this was in the days of Jesse James, we'd be worrying about being stopped, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bob, we're coming to that curve. Yeah, and then that crossing. Better whistle for it. Okay. Carrying a load of gold, huh? That's right. Boy, it must be some load. All the guys they got guarding it. Wish I had some, but... Hey, Bob, look. Yeah? There's a car stalled at Great Cross. I know, I see it. Well, the whistle, quick, quick. Bob, did we stop in time? No, we couldn't see it until we rounded that curve. We're going to hit that car. We're going to hit it hard. Hold on, Tom. Hold on. And now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Well, Harry, there she goes. That's right, Tater. And here he comes, walking towards us just as if he knew we were hiding here. Then again, why shouldn't he know? He had his instructions, same as we had ours. He knew we'd be in these bushes. Yeah, I know. This is going to give a hundred people a headache. Wait till they try and find out what this is all about. Uh, I got news for you. Uh, Yeah? I don't know either. You don't have to know. All you got to know is you're going to get paid. You can't figure this out. Nobody's going to figure this out. But somebody is going to be very happy. Believe me. Somebody's going to be very happy. Hello? Hello, Mary. This is Blackie. Oh, hello, Blackie. Are you back in town? No, Mary, I'm not. I'm still down here in Danville. And what a metropolis. It's nothing more than a crossroads with a railroad station. You must love it down there, then. When are you coming back? Well, that's why I called you, Mary... I've just finished my business here, but there's not another train out of here for six hours, oh. so I won't see you until late tonight. Oh, come in. What did you say just then, Blackie? I said come in, and someone just knocked on the door. I'll see you tonight then, late, Mary. Bye. Bye. Boston Blackie? Mm-hmm. Well, hello, beautiful. Are you Miss Danville or Mrs. Danville? I'm Margaret Perkins, Blackie. I've heard about you, and, and I need your help. That's what I like, the subtle approach. Uh, but I'm sorry. I'm a little out of my territory in this town of yours. You've got I... to help me, Blackie. I'm afraid my brother is in some kind of trouble. Sounds to me like he's the one who needs the help, then. Sorry, Miss Perkins. Blackie, I couldn't... please. Hmm. 
And that's the kind of logic I like. You think your brother is in trouble? This note he left me when he disappeared yesterday morning. What does it say? Please read it. Okay. Hmm. It says, uh, Goodbye, Margaret. I'm leaving this town for good and with enough money to keep me going for a long time. Don't try to find me. You never will. Signed, Harry. Well, you noticed what this note was written on, I suppose. Yes, yes, the back of a railroad timetable. Mm-hmm, there's a ring drawn around a special train, the Metropolitan Flyer. Well, yes, I noticed that, Well, but... it's obvious, Miss Perkins. Your brother's going to the city. There's no point in looking for him around here. Well, that's what I thought. Danville's too small for him to be here without my knowing about it. I'll tell you what I'll do, Miss Perkins. I can't get a train out of here for another six hours. But I'm going down to the railroad station to pick up my ticket. Maybe that's a good place to pick up something on your brother, too. One-way ticket to the city, please. Yeah, to the city, young fellow. And a train out of Danville today again for another five and a half hours. Yes, I know that, but I'll get my ticket now. That is, if you don't mind. Yeah, the only thing I mind is my rheumatism. <laughs> One way, you say. Yeah, that'll be a dollar and fifty cents. One fifty. Okay, here you are. Yeah, thank you, and here's your ticket, young fellow. Thank you. Say, by the way... You didn't see this young lady's brother in here yesterday, did you? Hello, Mr. Washburn. Oh, howdy there, Margaret. Uh, didn't see you. Uh, looking for Harry, are you? Yes. Nope, I ain't seen him. We think he took the Metropolitan Flyer out of here yesterday. Flyer? Uh, you mean the non-stop from the Capitol? Yes, I have an idea. Well, the, part... the idea's bad, Sonny. Flyer don't stop here. Never has in 50 years. Yes, it ever came was yesterday when it hit an auto up at the crossing a mile and a quarter past here. Oh, how terrible. Was anyone in the car hurt? Anybody hurt? Nope. And you know that was the funny thing about it. There weren't nobody in the car. There weren't nobody around even. And this auto was just sitting on the tracks all by itself. And no one ever claimed the wreck? Nope. Guess whoever owned the thing just walked off and left it. Mighty funny place to leave it, though, on the main line tracks with the Metropolitan Flyer coming through. Apparently, it stopped the flyer, though, didn't it? Oh, sure did. Flyer was standing out there in the middle of nowhere for 20 minutes. Yeah, but that don't have nothing to do with your brother, Margaret. Uh, I ain't seen him, not in a couple of days. Well, thanks, Mr. Washburn. Thanks a lot. Yes, thanks, old time. It's all right, young fellow. And say, Miss Perkins, is there a place in town where we can borrow a car? Why, yes, we can use my uncle's. Good. Let's get your uncle's car and go have a look at that wreck that stopped the flyer yesterday. Well, if you want to, but I don't Ms. see... Miss Perkins, your brother put a ring around the Metropolitan Flyer on the timetable for a reason. I'd like to take a flyer at looking at that wreck for a reason, too. There's the wreck, Blackie, in the ditch beside the track. And what a wreck, too, Miss Perkins. Good thing there was no one in it. Well, let's get out and have a look at that car. I don't know what it has to do with finding my brother, but if you say so... I don't say so. I just have a hunch, that's all. Something very strange about an empty car being left on a grade crossing. If it were out of gas, it could have been pushed off before it was abandoned. Look at this mess. It's hard to believe it was once an automobile, isn't it? I don't think that it's been classed as much of an automobile for a long time. It must be 10 or 12 years old. Say, here's a door frame with a body number on it. Does that mean anything? It means I might be able to find out who owned this car. I think I'll write it down. 732. Good heavens, what's this uh, terrible mess? Uh, that, Miss Perkins, was the engine. Hmm. The motor number's still visible. I think I'll write that down, too. Well, I thought license plates were the best means of a car identification. Well, they're fairly good, but not much help in this case. This car doesn't have plates. Oh, so it doesn't. That convinces me more than ever that... Say, look at this. Look at what? See this round hole in the motor block here? Yes. Well, that's where the carburetor belongs. And this engine had no carburetor. That bad? Well, <laughs> it isn't good. If you expect to do any driving, an engine can't run without one. Oh. Well, maybe it was knocked off in the accident. Oh, no. This motor hasn't had a carburetor for years. The place it should be attached to is all rusted over here. This car was pushed a toad here and purposely left on the tracks. Well, that means someone wanted it to be hit by the train. But why? Why? To stop the train, of course. 
But why did someone want to stop that fly act? Well, I'm sure I don't know. Well, I don't either. This might have nothing to do with your brother, but it has me puzzled. The first thing I want to find out is who owned this car. There's an automobile dealer in Danville, isn't there? Yes, Mr. Boswell. Well, Mr. Boswell knows a lot about cars, I'm sure. Let's go see how much he knows about people who buy them. Yes, Blackie, you sold that car yesterday morning at 9 o'clock. At 9 o'clock yesterday morning, eh, Mr. Boswell? And the Metropolitan Flyer comes through Danville at 10. Yes, sir, like clockwork. That means the car was bought just one hour before the Flyer hit it and wrecked it. This is getting more interesting every minute. Well, that means the car was bought to stop the train, doesn't it? <laughs> it wasn't bought for any cross-country tour. It wasn't even in running condition, was it, Mr. Boswell? Uh, no, no, it wasn't, Blackie. The two men who bought it had it towed away. Two men bought the car, huh? Did you know them? I uh, knew one of them. It was your uh, brother Harry, Miss Perkins. My brother? Yes, he came in with a fellow I've seen before, but don't know by name. I think your brother called him Skeet, though, or Pete, or something like that. Well, so Harry and his friend bought that car to stop the Metropolitan Flyer. Okay, here's where I start finding out why that train was stopped. <laughs> Give me your keys, Miss Perkins. I'll unlock the door for you. People in small towns never lock doors, Blackie. You'll come in a while? Yes, it's still several hours before my train leaves, and there's nothing I can do about your brother till I get to the city. You think that's obviously where he's gone? I think that more than ever now. I think he used the car to stop the Metropolitan Flyer and got on it. Let's go in and talk this over. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, Harry! Uh oh, he's been shot Harry. several times. Harry, what happened? Who did this to you? Oh, tell me, darling, who did this? Oh. Harry. Oh. Harry, what is it? I got to... got to tell... tell why... why we stopped... stopped the train. I got to... Oh. Oh. Harry! It's no use, Miss Perkins. I'm awfully sorry, but he's dead. Yes. I know he is black here. Go ahead. Cry if you want to. It'll do you good. <laughs> What's this in his shirt pocket here? It looks like a newspaper clipping. This is what Harry was trying to tell us. This newspaper clipping says the Metropolitan Flyer was carrying gold. A million dollars in gold. I thought it was something like that. Number, please. Operator, get me Inspector Faraday at police headquarters in the city right away. Faraday speaking. Hello, Faraday. This is Blackie. I have the case you're working on solved for you already. Oh, you have, have you? Well, what makes you think you've solved it? And how did you even know I was working on a case? Oh, I didn't say you were working, pal. I don't expect miracles. I just said you've got a case that probably has you stopped. Well, for once, you know what you're talking about. It's the toughest, biggest case I've had in years. And if I don't crack it soon, the commissioner's going to make a traffic cop out of me. Oh, who did it, Blackie? Harry Perkins and a fellow named Skeet or Pete. Perkins? A fellow named Skeet? Who are they? The two men who robbed that shipment of gold. Gold? What gold? The gold that was supposed to come in from the capital on the Metropolitan Flyer yesterday morning. You must be crazier than I thought, Blackie. That gold arrived on schedule yesterday, and is safe and sound in the National Bank. No. Yes. I'm not looking for any gold, big, borrowed, or stolen. I'm looking for the guy who killed Roger Lane. Roger Lane? Who's he? He's the guy whose murderer you aren't letting me find. Because you're bothering me, that's who. No gold is missing? Uh, if you had any in your teeth, it'd be missing, because I'd knock it out. Now, hang up and don't bother me, Blackie. I got something on my mind. On it, but not in it. Okay, Faraday, maybe you do have a problem, but believe me, trying to figure out when a train was stopped has me stopped, too. <laughs> Perkins and a man not yet properly identified bought an old automobile and placed it on a grade crossing where it was hit and demolished by a non-stop railroad train carrying a shipment of gold. But though the train was stopped, it was not robbed. Later, Harry is shot to death by an unknown assailant. And Boston Blackie, working on the case for the dead man's sister and searching for a reason why the train was stopped, 
comes to the city in search of clues. With him, as he knocks on Mary Wesley's door, is the dead man's sister. Hello, Mary. Oh, Hello. Blackie, come in. I'm so glad. Oh. Oh, it's not what you're thinking, Mary. Miss Perkins, Miss Wesley? Well, I don't have to say it the other way, too, do I? Oh, of course you don't. How do you do, Miss How Perkins? How do you do? Miss Perkins is the girl I told you about on the phone just before I left Danville, Mary. Oh. Oh, I see. Oh, Miss Perkins, I'm awfully sorry about your brother. And I know that Blackie will find out who killed him. I hope so. Well, won't you come in, both of you? We will. And, Mary, I'm going to ask you a favor. Of course, Blackie. I want you to keep Miss Perkins here with you for a day or two until I find out who killed her brother. I'm sure his death had something to do with the stopping of that Metropolitan Flyer. Harry and his killer stopped that train together for a reason I can't understand. Yet. Well, maybe the train was wrong. Well, that's what we both thought, Miss Wesley, until Blackie found out the gold it was carrying wasn't stolen. Yes, I wondered about that. Maybe it was stolen and Faraday just won't admit it. Well, make Miss Perkins comfortable, will you, Mary? I'm going to make Inspector Faraday uncomfortable. So you think the shipment of gold was stolen off that train, do you, Blanky? Yes, Faraday, and I think it's such a big case the authorities decided to leave you out of it. Oh, is that so? Well, let me tell you something, wise guy. This afternoon I talked to the bank that was supposed to receive that dough, and they got it. Do you hear? They got it. Now, beat it, Blackie. I got problems. You always have problems. Now, listen to I'm me. I'm not I listening have... to anything. I've got a murder to worry about. Roger Lane was killed this morning at about 7 o'clock, and I know who killed him. Well, that's fine. Arrest the killer, and then let's try to figure out the thing that's got me stopped. Uh, forget it, will you? I've got a killer, and I know his name, Sam Baldwin. I know he killed Roger Lane, yet I can't break his alibi. Maybe that's because he isn't your killer. Oh, uh, look, Faraday. There was the Metropolitan Flyer standing out there in the country with a couple of million dollars in gold in the baggage car. It was stopped on purpose, but it wasn't for the gold. What was it stopped for? I don't know, and I don't care. Maybe it was on the wrong track. All I know is that if you think that flyer was stopped for the gold, you're on the wrong track, too. Look, Baldwin, sit there and smirk till your face freezes in a grin if you want to. But I know you killed your partner. <laughs> you... You know it, huh, Inspector Faraday? Then why don't you arrest me? Because I don't make arrests until I have proof. Until I can slap a charge on a man and make that charge stick. Then why do you bother me? Can you prove I killed Roger? No, but I can prove you had a motive. No, can you? Yes. Lane embezzled from the company. He stole plenty from you. Mm-hmm, so he did. I can also prove it was your gun that killed him, can't I? Yes, yes, you can, Inspector. I admit it was my gun that killed him. But does that mean that I was the one who fired that gun? I say it does. Oh, but how can that be, Inspector? You forget I was in the Capitol. Or I was on my way back from the Capitol when Roger was shot, wasn't I? Yeah, you were. That's why you aren't under arrest. Yet. And why I'll never be under arrest? Do you think a jury would believe that I shot and killed Roger Lane this morning at 7 o'clock when I boarded the flyer in the Capitol at midnight last night and arrived here at 11? Well, man, I was four hours outside the city when Roger was killed. You checked with the conductor. He told you when I got on and off. Yes, yes, he remembered you getting off. That's why... Say, Boston Blackie said something about a train that gives me an idea. You think you have a foolproof alibi, do you, Baldwin? Well, it does prove I couldn't possibly have murdered my friend Roger. Oh, it does, does it? Well, I'm going to find Blackie, and when I do... I think maybe I'll find a hole in that alibi of yours. I'll see you later, Baldwin. Mm -hmm. You will, huh? Hello? Jeter Johnson, please. Speaking. Oh, Jeter. Inspector Faraday was here again. So what, Baldwin? What are you worried about? Plenty. But why? I took care of the only guy who could rat on us. Harry Perkins is dead. Yes, yes, I know you took care of him all right, and that was good work. But, Jeet, you're going to have to take care of somebody else the same way. Oh. Boston Blackie. Boston Blackie? I don't want to mess with that guy. Look, you want to go to the chair for killing Harry Perkins? No, but what does Blackie know about who killed Harry? Nothing yet, but he will pretty soon. Because he seems to know something about why you and Harry stopped that train near Danville this morning. What? 
He knows why we stopped it? I think he does. And if he gets to the police with it, they'll be able to prove that I killed my partner. Uh Uh-oh. And, Jeet, if I go to the chair for killing Lane, you'll go there, too, for killing Harry. I'll say to it. So, uh, don't you think you ought to take care of Blackie? Huh? Get it, Margaret. It's probably Blackie. All right. You don't think he has any news, do you, Mary? He might. Blackie solves very difficult cases awful fast sometimes. Yes, I know. Hello, Blackie. Oh, hello. Hiya. You're Boston Blackie's girl. Is he here? No, no, he's not, but uh, he's expected any minute. Good. I got a tip. If he wasn't home, he'd be here at your apartment. I'll wait for him. Well, I... All right, come in. Thanks. Hey, nice place you got here. Why, Jeter. Jeter Johnson, what are you doing here? Well, Margaret, what are you doing out of Danville? I thought you weren't ever going to leave the place. I'm here because of Harry. He was murdered this morning, Jeter. Murdered? Oh, say I know how you feel, Jeter. You were one of his best friends. Oh, excuse me, Miss Wesley. It's Mr. Johnson. How do you do, Mr. Uh, Johnson? Jeter and I are old friends. He lives in Thomasville, just three miles from Danville. Oh, I see. And you're an old friend of Blackie's, too. Yeah. Well, this is all very chummy. You uh, don't mind if I wait for him, huh? No, not at all, Mr. Johnson. But do you have to wait for him with a gun? A gun? The outline of a gun is pretty evident in your coat pocket. Okay. So what if I am packing a gun? Just stand uh, right where you are, both of you. Jeter. I'm waiting for Blackie. And what do you want with him? I just want to find out what he knows. My boss thinks it might be too much. That's why I'm waiting for him with, uh, like you say, Miss Wesley, a gun in my pocket. Now, if he doesn't know anything, the gun stays there. Simple, isn't it? Well, what is it that Blackie is supposed to know about? Why the Metropolitan Flyer was stopped. Oh, I'm sure he doesn't know a thing about that. Now, believe me, he doesn't. Sure, I'll believe you right away. Oh, oh. There's Blackie now. He, he'll tell Look, you that Miss he... Look, Wesley, he... I'm getting behind that door in the other room. Let Blackie in, but don't say I'm here. I'll let all three of you have it. Don't forget. Don't worry, I wish I could. Okay, let Blackie in. Yes, but in for what? Margaret, cross your fingers that Blackie doesn't know anything. They're crossed. Good. Hello, Mary. Oh, come in, Blackie. My goodness, you you don't Mary, know... Mary, Mary, a... I've got it. I've got it. I've got the answer to the whole case. Oh, for goodness sakes, you mean the Afghanistan case, don't you? That's wonderful. Afghanistan? But, but I... What are you talking uh, about? Oh, Afghanistan, Blackie, you know. I do not, but I do know why that train was stopped just north of Danville. Oh, morning. that. Who cares about that? Who cares about it? I do, and Faraday is going to care about it, too. Look at this clipping I found in the afternoon paper. Oh. It says Thomas Baldwin of the Capitol, brother of Sam Baldwin of this city, bought a small building today. Blackie, that doesn't mean anything. It really doesn't, does it? Uh, uh, Mary, stop making those silly faces. But, I'm serious uh, about this. It's a clue to the whole thing. I know why. That train was stopped this morning to let Thomas Baldwin get off and go back to the Capitol and let Sam Baldwin get on in his place. Oh, but Blackie, that doesn't make any kind of sense. Don't you see that... I certainly do see, Miss Perkins. Sam Baldwin phoned his brother in the Capitol to take the Metropolitan Flyer to the city at midnight last night. Oh. At seven this morning, he killed Roger Lane. Blackie, you don't know what you're saying. Don't I, though? Listen, by 8.39... He was near Danville, 50 miles from here, where Harry Perkins and his friends stopped the Metropolitan Flyer with that old jalopy. Oh, Blackie, I don't think my brother had anything to do with that. Look, let me finish, will you? The whole thing works out perfectly. When the train was stopped and the passengers got out to look at the wreck, Thomas Baldwin got off and went back to the Capitol by bus or car. And his brother Sam Baldwin got on the train in his place. That's right, Blackie. Uh, Who's that? Blackie, I tried to stop you. Oh, a man with a gun. Yeah. A man with a gun. And you're a man with no future. You're the man who killed Harry Perkins, aren't you? That's right. I bought the jalopy with him, only the dealer knew him, so I had to knock off Harry. The name's Johnson. Jeter Johnson. Blackie, I tried to warn you that he was here and tell you not to let on you knew anything about that train. Oh, that was the Afghanistan gag, wasn't it? You're gonna wish you were in Afghanistan in a minute, Blackie. Come on, out the door. You girls, too. 
We're all going bye-bye. No, they're not, pal. Oh, but you are, Johnson. Let go, sir. Drop that gun, you. No, no, copper. Not without dropping you first. Wait, you... You both missed Faraday, but I've got Cheetah. No, no, you haven't, Blackie. Blackie, look out. He's getting away. No, no, he isn't. Oh, oh Blackie, what a suck. Uh, Mary, please. Such language. <gasps> well, here he is, Faraday. All yours. And Sam Baldwin is going to be yours, too. You know that? Yeah. I came looking for you, Blanky, to get more information about that train. I heard it all while I waited outside that door. Then you know how Baldwin could have murdered his partner at 7 this morning and still come in on the Metropolitan Flyer at 11 o'clock? Sure. But don't forget, you thought the Flyer was stopped because it was carrying gold. Yes, I did. And one of these days, somebody's going to mistake me for a train. I've been carrying you for years. This is Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surfer series. Oh, and a madam's wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. A bit of clever misdirection by the writers uh, to get us focusing on this as a potential gold train. And uh, I also like this as an example of a case where Blackie and Faraday. Uh, really do combine here, even though Blackie mostly figured it out from the newspaper. It all started with the information they orig- they individually gave each other and uh, then uh, added with uh, more information. Uh, I will say Blackie kind of throwing shade at Faraday at the end was probably 
Uh, not a good bit of timing given that Faraday just saved his life. But this is something they do just because they like each other. It's a Blacky and Faraday thing. All right, well, that'll do it for today. If you do have a comment, send it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. Become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. And you can also write us P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.